Hey, how you doing? This is Tom, and this is Tom's Rodeo Room Show. And did you hear that? That's WWV on 2.5 megahertz, which I don't usually get. I don't know. I don't know if they broadcast on 2.5 megahertz all the time or not. I think they do, and I think I just don't go down there. Usually, it's kind of noisy down there. But anyway, let me tell you what my setup is. It's seven o'clock in the morning here in Clearwater, Florida, and I'm using my SDR Play RSP Duo. No, excuse me, DX, because I'm down in my workshop. I have my DX in my workshop and my Duo up in my office. And I was just playing around this morning, trying to see, you know, how things are going, how my antennas are working. I'm really concerned about my antenna <clears throat> that's up in my office, my G5RV, um, which has a coax cable that's 30 years old, and it seems like it's not as sensitive. I have a little more trouble picking up signals, it seems. But, of course, the solar flux index is 76, which is way too low. Anyway, I have an antenna switch going to the A input of this SDR. And on that antenna, antenna switch, I have the mega loop antenna, and it's, um, I'm using its little power supply to, to power it because I'm not on the B input of the RSP DX, which does provide power. I've got an in fed. MFJ antenna. It doesn't do too good. I don't know if it's where I got it configured or not. And then finally, I have my 31-foot vertical antenna from MFJ. And I can now switch between those three antennas. And I can show you right now what happens. Hold on. So we're going to turn mute off. Pretty good signal. That's the mega loop. That's the uh, infed. Might be a problem there. And there's the vertical. See the noise? See the noise here? Now that is, let me just switch it back to the mega loop. Yeah, see that noise level go down? I think, I think that's what I'm seeing up in my office is my G5 RV, which is a dipole antenna, uh, is pulling in all that RF noise. I thought it was coming from my office, the electronics in my office, but I don't think that's the case. I think it's just in my area, you know, like uh, power lines and stuff like that, because the um, Humidity is way down. I think it's like in the 40s or something. So air is really dry. So anyway, I'm going to just do a quick, well, quick, kind of quick, scan. I'm using um, a subset of the database that one of my subscribers made for me. And I'm hoping he'll send me an updated one because this one's over a year old now. But it's the EIBI database, and the problem if you use the raw, the raw EIB database, it has tons of duplicates because for every frequency and station, it includes entries for every program on that frequency and station and the times. So you get all these duplicates. So if you're trying to use that to scan, it takes forever to scan because there might be six entries for one frequency in one station. So he's uh, come up with a uh, mechanism, a script, I'll call it, for Excel that eliminates all the multiple entries and just leaves one per station per frequency. So it scans a lot faster. 
And then I took that and I chopped it up into smaller databases. For instance, and that EIBI database goes from like 10 hertz to 30 megahertz. So everything below, and this one, everything below 2 megahertz, I killed off. So this scans from 2 to 30 megahertz. I have other ones, like here's some other ones up here, for 31 megahertz band, approximately. I extended it a little beyond 31. Here's 49 megahertz. Here's other ones here that Mike from SDR Play generated and posted for people to download. That's about 50% of these or more. And then I've got duplicates depending on what antenna I wanted to use. Because in these databases here, you have to select an antenna. And you can switch it, but I just say, you know, use the same antenna for the whole database. So that's what I've got here. I'm going to let it scan for a few minutes. If it finds a good station, I'll try to stop it and switch between antennas. Here we go. Again, right now, it's on the Megaloop antenna, which is not very expensive. I think it was like $50 or $40, and it works great. Okay, it's working. That was probably somebody on single sideband. You know, the upper end of the hand band down there for 80 meters. Next morning, there we go. Uriah fell with an arrow. Okay, so this is his heart. It may be better. This is the Adventist World Radio. I'm not sure exactly where the transmitter is, but I don't think it's too far from me. Probably less than a thousand miles. Coming in really strong, and this is uh, on the mega loop. So now we'll switch, and I'll turn the audio back on. I'll switch to the other antennas. And the name of God isn't in fed in this chapter until the very vertical last line that reads but the thing back that to the megalo has done this now on that particular mute you on that particular frequency the noise level is not too high on the vertical so the vertical is doing almost as good as the megaloop now the vertical the tip of the antenna that goes down the pole vertically um, is 31 feet in the air. The mega loop, the center of the loop, is about 12 feet in the air. So there's a difference there. Coax cable is different, of course. Um, so you got a lot of variables. So let's go ahead and scan some more. Take it off. There we go. There's WWV. Uh, I got to pause. So there's the mega loop. So there still is quite a bit of noise on the on the 31 foot vertical. Now my. Th G5RV, which is a dipole, about 102 feet, was my best antenna. Then I got the MFJ 31 foot vertical, and that was my best antenna. Then I got the Mega Loop, and now that's my best antenna. Again, lots of variables, different coax cable, different locations uh, as far as the antenna different locations as far as the receivers, different receivers. I'm using the uh, STR Play RPX um, 
duo here and I'm using I mean upstairs and down here I'm using the DX why did I see that wrong okay upstairs in my office I'm using the RSP duo down here <laughs> I'm using the RSP DX which I believe for shortwave is the best receiver from uh, SDR play people I like both of them um, I also have the 1A and the 1 because I've, I've really uh, liked their SDRs and so I've gotten every one of them I, there's one other one I don't think I have okay let's go ahead instead of me jabbering I'm just gonna scan for a while I'm not even gonna stop let it go to about 10 megahertz <laughs> Pretty strong signals. Could that really be the BBC? Let's listen for a while. I don't think it is. That sounds like a, a Brother Stair station in Tennessee. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Which is only about 800 miles. Whoa, boy. Okay, get off there. There we go. That sounds like Brother Stairs. Yeah, those... I think those last three are Brother Stair stations from Tennessee. So, you know, this is this can be misleading. I mean, there's probably let me mute this for a second. There probably is a trans or was at one time a transmission from China Radio on 5.935, but there's also. Um, transmissions from other stations on the same frequency. <clears throat> I can say I'm hoping the gentleman that made this database for me will make an update and send it to me. Because I can say this is the EIB database from over a year ago and it, it changes a lot from month to month. And so I, I'm probably getting some misinformation here. Or it's just that, uh, like I said, these other stations that are closer to me are now broadcasting on a station that China Radio also does or did, but I can't hear them. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to explain things a little bit here. I don't know if I did a very good job. <clears throat> Let me pause this for a second and mute it. I made a couple of suggestions to the people at SDR Play. If you uh, if you want to have something added or changed, you can go on their website and create a ticket for suggestions, not just a problem, or even for a problem if you find a problem. And I made a couple of suggestions to them about the scan function. And 
I'm not going to talk about that right now. Matter of fact, I'm going to make another video of that because uh, I'm just going to let this scan and then we'll quit and then I'll do a separate video. Okay, well, se registró un cambio cuando aparecieron las famosas estampillas producidas por el germano norteamericano Nicolás. <tose> Now the reason it's stopping so the reason it's stopping so many times and still having the same uh, station but off frequency is there is actually an entry at that frequency. So that's why it's stopping. Like I say, I'm going to let it go to about 10 megahertz because... That's a ham. Single sideband. Quite a few signals this morning. I'm surprised. Some of them are just noise. Yeah, with a solar flux index of like 74, I think, I'm surprised I'm getting these many signals. There we go. Now it's on right frequency. Ouch. Okay, get off that frequency. Somebody's keying up there. Okay. I, I did not realize it was going to take this long to scan. There's quite a few signals out there this morning. And there, there are many more then I had a half hour ago at about 6.30. So that's promising. So turn your radios on and see what you can find. That's, this is the beauty and that's kind of why I've, I, I say it kiddingly, I've gone to the dark side, is you, just, you can set these SDs are, SDRs up to scan and just sit back and watch and see what it finds. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up and have a great day. Bye-bye.